Hey friends, welcome to Moxie Gardens. Today we're going to talk all things hardscape, particularly hardscape in this garden, such as, hey Mike, what's that round thing right there? That's a moon gate or star gate if you prefer. Either way, we're going to talk about it. People want to know about this border right here. We're going to show you how we got to this point. Um, I did show earlier in spring about possibly if you are not budgeted for a sprinkler system or a drip line to come in how to add a simple project such as using old water hoses throughout the uh, landscape to act as a drip system so we'll tackle that people want to know about the shed back here they think it's pretty sharp so we'll talk that um, I also have up here I have a pallet wall and I just recently put in this um, new art piece at the front of the, the the garden. I also use railroad ties as a landscape or hardscape uh, border. So we're gonna tackle all those things. And then one day, a couple years ago, I was having a rough day at work, uh, more mental than anything. So instead of taking the interstate home, I decided to take a back road, which went, led to another back road. I just needed to kind of unwind before I got home. And it was a good decision because I ended up running into an old rusty fire pit. Somebody either tossed it out or it fell out. Um, irregardless, it ended up in this garden and we're going to use it as a planter. So at the very end of this, we're going to plant up this planter and see what we can do with just some old rust. And maybe, just maybe, it'll inspire you or trigger you to get out there and see what's in the garden and repurpose it. So that being said, let's get on to this uh, garden tour. Let's check out some hardscape and let's see if we can all be inspired together. Okay, so as promised, we're gonna talk about the Moon Gate. Everybody asks about the Moon Gate. This is actually what helped kick off this channel. I, I wasn't actually trying to make videos. I just um, had a good weekend uh, before we were heading home to see my nephew graduate, and the garden looked really good. I videotaped it. My daughter said, you should put that on YouTube. I put it on YouTube. Um, reluctantly, she walked us through it. My wife and I are technology sound, so they're able to figure all that out. One thing led to another. This kind of caught the attention of viewers. And so here we are today. Um, we call it a moon gate. It originated in Japanese gardens. Is that correct, Jess? Yes. Yes, so if you're interested in seeing the background behind that, uh, just Google Japanese, or pardon me, Google moon gates. Um, I have a brother who welds. Um, he lives in Midland, Texas. At one time he lived in North Dakota. And so um, when he moved to Texas, he found himself having a little bit more experience. and. Um, one thing led to another. I gave him some dimensions and this is what we have today. It's uh, solid metal. Um, I did, uh, when we brought it home, my wife and I rolled it to the backyard early in the morning so that uh, all the neighbors and everybody wouldn't be like, what's going on? So uh, super bashful about that whole deal because you just don't know how it's going to work out. But um, yeah, so we took some vinegar. I think it was vinegar and water in a spray bottle, sprayed it down. It helped the erosion part um, move quicker. quicker? Um, it is solid metal. There are uh, one, two, three, four. The four sides uh, are sheet metal. And I'll put up some um, photos of my brother making it. But there's some, and I don't have the video of him making it, just some photos. But you can see where he lays out the metal um, and then just kind of rounds everything out. But uh, lo a lot of hours of welding. So if you don't have somebody in your family that um, is a welder, you're looking at a very, very, very high price, costly um, project. But uh, solid metal, four sides, dimensions are what you want. I didn't, I didn't look at uh, Japanese gardens and try to figure out what I want. I just used my own ideas, called him, he put it together. So um, yeah, super solid, I love it. It's, uh, it's, it's something that's fascinating. And then one day as these trees, you could start to see the trees are starting to come over it. One day, um, this will all fill enclosed and you'll feel like you're walking in a room. That's how I will, that's my vision for this uh, area. So that being said, um, uh, my wife tells me I say that's being said a lot, but uh, yeah, that being said, we'll move on to the next project. Okay, so the next big question behind the moon gate is how did uh, I make my borders? What is it made out of? And what purpose does it serve? So I have clay based soil. So I have to raise a lot of things up to get them to um, like this 
this uh, garden here. So what I've done is I've raised dirt. I brought soil in from other parts of the garden and from local uh, box stores and dumped it in here, kind of combined it all. Um, I used different amendments to um, get, get this soil to where I need to, uh, you know, have a happy garden. So what I've done is I filled all this in and then I came back with this border. Now this border, all this is, are posts that I've bought at Tractor Supply. I went down there, picked up um, maybe like 10. There was the four inch, I believe, the eight inch, and then the 10 inch uh, post. I purchased those posts, brought them home, and got a chainsaw, and if I wiggle them out of here, all this is are just random cuts. Um, some will be a foot, some will be eight inches, some will be two feet. And then you can see here how far I, I've dug them down. I did not put a barrier behind them. Um, and the reason being is if you look at a lot of the uh, Windsor wall or, or walls that are kind of falling over, it's because there's, they're not assembled correctly. So a lot of that pressure from contraction and expansion during um, the cold season, frost and stuff, it starts to force it through. Well, all these are, are lined up right beside one another at random heights and and random depths so so i might have one that uh sits back in the soil like this and then one forward and then i just kind of there's just no random there's no no particular order how i do it i just kind of randomly put them in there but i tried to dig them down three or four inches and so all the water is able to escape between the cracks and um, I've never, ever, ever had to pick one of those up. None of them have ever moved forward, fallen over, um, you know, kind of got wonky it, just because they're sitting in there nice and neat. There's cracks for the water to um, um, expand and contract and flow out of there. So um, those posts can vary in price. Uh, so I won't give you the price here, but the, um, depending on where you're at. But all those posts are, are wooden posts that you would hold cattle back or put a fencing up for um, different livestock. So um, I also use another area in the garden where I use railroad ties and I do the same thing. I'll take you over there next. But uh, I would recommend adding all your soil before you go through and put those in and then just um, adding the mulch and stuff to, to come to the top. But you can see over here, Jesse, can you see that? There's different heights. I can put my hand behind this one and that's where the soil's at. So about that far down, I have soil. So that much sticks up, kind of gives a coastal vibe. I really like how it looks. Um, again, just very random post, nothing particular. You won't have um, anybody in the family asking you to go get a board stretcher on this one because whatever length you cut it at, that's what it's at. So, and please don't look for a board stretcher. I've, we've all been uh, duped into doing that. So. Um, hopefully that answers some of the questions, but um, I think it adds a, a certain element to here. We sometimes get caught up in just lining out bricks. Nothing wrong with that. I, I think that's a good style. I love to go look at other people's gardens and I would never tell people that that looks terrible or anything. And I think sometimes we, we envision gardens a certain way and then we um, uh, discredit individuals who only do certain ways. So um, I think this actually looks really well, but it, I've got away from the idea where you line up the bricks and doing tif different things. Maybe this will uh, trigger an idea in your head that you can um, go back and implement into your garden. So right here, I'm standing on one of the bridges, one of the many bridges I've added to the garden. Um, here's how I, I do my landscape. So when I'm creating a bed, if I was to pull all these layers back and tell you start from fresh, um, what I've done in the past is I've rototilled the ground where I'm gonna make a, be a bed, or you could use a hoe if it's gonna be a smaller bed. Use whatever you need to to rough up the soil. So I have clay-based soil, so I have to figure out ways to get all these plants that particularly don't care for water and are no fuss plants, but they still don't wanna be locked into all this uh, soil. It doesn't allow for their roots sometimes to get established and I have to spend a little bit more time and energy and money on getting uh, a lot of these um, different shrubs, trees, uh, perennials and annuals to um, activate the way that I would like for them here in this garden. So I've raised all these beds. So I start at ground level. Nothing is dug into the ground particularly. I start at ground level. I've softened that up, loosened the soil, 
and then I come back and I start bringing in different layers of um, soil amendments um, and then throughout the garden where I've dug up other places I'll add it and then I'll amend it all together and that's how I start to raise my beds so when I come to this bridge and I add all my bridge I don't dig anything down I don't lay I just set this stuff on rocks so that it, I allow the drainage to um, or the water to drain below this so this bread bridge is sitting on two two by sixes by 12 foot long um, these are one by sixes treated lumber and if I didn't mention over there those posts um, you have to have treated treated post if you go through and you buy lumber and you're in a wet atmosphere you will um, it will just rot it will rot and your money will be gone in a few years and it'll be a waste and all for naught and it can discourage you sometimes so the information is important that you go when you go to if you decide to put in a bridge or put in a border like we have here at the garden you have to have that treated lumber so under here is all hollow on this side i, I started to build the soils up um, eventually someday maybe 20 years down the road i might have to replace this um, but it's an investment that's uh, worthwhile because i've already had it in the ground for maybe seven years and i i pull back the soil just a little bit just to see if there's any decaying going on I haven't had any decay issues. It's not saying I won't. I'm eventually going to have decay issues. That's just the way it is. Anytime uh, lumber is touching uh, soil or, and moisture, you're just going to have it. But as of for right now, I've had um, this here for several years and I continue to um, see that I'm going to uh, have this here for a while. Uh, so definitely check to make sure that you're purchasing treated lumber. Um, and this is in cedar tone. You can get it in a couple different um colors particularly at home depot and lowe's they give you options that being said um, i set this on and i've built all these beds up and raised them up one um, it allows for these plants when i plant something the roots can just take off you know they're not fighting the rough and tough um, soils of um, clay uh, you know I, like i mentioned i have the clay soil so this this actually helps this uh air, this whole garden thrive and jesse if you were to pan over there so i could give them um a clue you can see that bed um starting at the bridge another one of my bridges of treated lumber um those of you who have been with me for a while you'll understand but from here i don't want to move too fast for the video but uh all the way over to here is brand new um, from last year and all that is is because I raised I started at ground level I rotated till the the soil then I threw in all the soil the top soil that you would get at your um, um, local box stores or maybe you have some areas in the garden where you're going to bring in soil but remember though if you have clay based soils and you're moving it from there to here you're still got clay based soils so um, when I brought in all this soil and I amended it with some of the top soil that are some of the uh, clay soils that I added to the garden, it really softened it up. So all this plants, you look at this and go, there's no way that's a year old. Yes, it's a year old. Um, what I've done is by raising this, I've allowed the roots to just go crazy and I don't have to fight uh, with that clay based soil. So hopefully I'm articulating that correctly. Um, but all this is, is probably about, it starts here, it starts ground level and it works its way up. So from the beginning, that's some weeds here, but from the flat base right here, all the way to the back, there's about a um, 12 inch incline. So um, adding this, uh, all these uh, mature plants in here and digging them out throughout the garden from areas that had um, shade areas that uh, now I needed to transplant them into a sunny location, they've just thrived. and so. You can do that by getting, you'll have to purchase bigger pots um, and bigger plants. You'll have to invest a little bit more if you wanted to, to look that much like that and um, that soon. However, uh, you still, you can still do a lot with a little, but raising your soil and your beds up is just, it, it's a game changer for me in this garden. And so when people find out this garden is only about eight years old, they just can't believe it. And I think that's the key. Um, again, I don't have that horticulture background or that knowledge. Um, I don't have that handed down uh, knowledge from other individuals. This is just basically um, getting out here and playing in the soil and figuring it out on my own that this is uh, a way to really maximize 
um, a small garden space and get these things to thrive. So hopefully that it helps. Um, like I said, this is uh, bridge is holding back the soil on that side and holding the soil on that side and it's hollow inside. So there's a, plenty of air movement to um, dry this out if we have any moisture. But again, you have to use uh, the, the uh, lumber that is treated. Otherwise you will be angry at yourself and it'll be a lost investment. Moving on to the next project. Another area that I get asked often, um, this border through here, if I may, can you see that through there, Jesse? So all that is are rail railroad ties cut at different lengths, um, popped in here. And again, I don't put any backing to it. When I say backing, I'm not putting in anything that will disrupt the moisture from escaping between those posts. Um, here in Kansas zone 6A, we will have a lot of times these cold, cold um, freezing winters uh, will expand and contract and push your lumber or your rocks, whatever it is, um, in and out as it um, goes through the process of heating and, and cooling. So there's no backing there. So the moisture is able to escape, therefore allowing me to never even have to move any of these. So these posts might be in here my entire life um, span because um, they are treated. They are um, set up in a way that the majority of it is um, able to get to the air so it can dry out. I think I have them down about four inches into the ground, four or five inches. It was again, nothing is set in stone, meaning I didn't plant them at a certain depth. They're just sitting in there just far enough down that uh, the soil, um, or so that they don't lean over or fall. And um, you can see they're sturdy as all get out. They just actually work one-on-one -on -one with the uh, soil. And at the end of the day, this just turns out so well. One of the things I want to stress um, that if you are putting any kind of vegetables in any of these borders, make sure you're not using treated wood. Make sure you're not using treated railroad ties because that stuff has toxins in it that will leak into your um, vegetables and then we'll pass it on to you. So make sure and do your research. I don't want any of you to, um, you know, digest or give your children or anything, um, something to digest that would be toxic. So very important that do your research. Just, uh, I'm just sharing with you some of the ideas that I use throughout the garden, but um, I, I particularly like this. Again, the process was I wrote it tilled the ground, I added the soil on top of it and then I came back with the borders. I did not build the soil or I did not build the border and then fill it in with soil. Um, I allowed, I allowed the, the soil to talk to me, tell me how high it could get before I start to uh, maneuver things around. And um, yeah, so this one actually is my highest bed, I believe. I think this is about 13, 15 inches in some space, um, 17 inches on the backside because we have a slope. So this is uh, the biggest... Um, uh, garden our biggest depth that we have in the garden so um, if you're looking for something cheap and easy and you have some railroad ties in the community that they're getting rid of uh, this would be a good process just get you a sharp chainsaw cut them down add them to the soil and uh, build your next bed so another little fun project um, I've talked about this on the last couple videos so I apologize but there are a lot of questions that are being asked um, either on Instagram or on the channel itself and so um, the more I can um, inform you guys, maybe the more that uh, people can go out and introduce these things into their garden. Um, all this is is just a piece of art. There's nothing, um, it's not performing any other duty in the garden, but just for a visual. Uh, that metal piece uh, used to sit on under the gazebo in the back that is now gone. And um, it used to be on top of the koi pond. Uh, my son and I carried it over here. I was waiting to uh, take it to the front sidewalk so we can um, scrap it. And the idea that I like to reuse and repurpose um, played a big part in this. So that that is super heavy. So this uh, metal structure uh, that's hollow in the middle, we my son and I carried it to this point. It was so heavy that we stopped, dropped it here, um, left it here for about a week. The more I walked back and forth, I continued to think, how could I repurpose that? I really hate to scrap it. 
Um, and then, so these posts used to be part of that uh, koi pond that was back there. They helped hold the water in with a liner. One thing led to another and I think it just, it's a beautiful piece of art now. And so um, somewhere down the road, there is, the, I've already got some um, vines planted in the background. It will cover up that uh, view in the back. It will, and then I have a, a Japanese blood good here. And I think all these, uh, these different ideas of foliage and stuff, the vines and the trees uh, will help play a part in this beautiful piece of uh, hardscape and add so much to the entrance of the garden as you walk to the back. And then um, really all it's missing now is some evening lighting. And um, I think it's just gonna be, uh, it is already a, a, an awesome addition to the garden. So again, I can't reiterate enough. If you're new to gardening or you're just kind of in a lull of not knowing where to go next in your garden, look around, see what's laying in, in your garden that can be repurposed, sit on it, sleep on it. Um, think about, don't sleep on it particularly. I mean, think about ideas that, uh, you know, use, use some of my ideas where I'll just, uh, I, I look throughout the garden and I see what I have and say, Hey, what can, how can I repurpose this? And I may not be able to do it today, but I start thinking about it and I sleep on the idea of what can I do. And, and, um, maybe you've got some stuff laying around in your garden or your yard, or maybe it's not a, a garden yet, or maybe you have neighbors who have, um, debris laying around. Maybe you're driving around quite often and you go junking. Um, look at how you can repurpose different things on a cheap on the cheap and then like I said this stuff was purchased maybe six years ago and I didn't even have to spend anything the second time around and it stayed in the garden and look at the impact I've had off of two projects now with the same material so super exciting um, take a look around uh, your landscape and see if uh, there's anything you could repurpose Okay, so here's another question that I got asked. So maybe you're on a budget, maybe you're on a really tight budget and you can't, um, um, you don't have the resources to put in a drip system or a sprinkler system, or maybe you're not as enthusiastic about it, so you're not going to, but you still want things to survive throughout the hot months of the summer. So um, I can't give myself credit for this give myself credit for um, implementing it to the garden, but I, somewhere, some way, I found this idea, and I can't remember who, so I don't know who to give the credit to, but definitely not me. So all I've done is I've taken old water hoses throughout um, the garage and the shed, and I've repurposed them. You know how some of them start to wear and tear, they kink a lot, and you just decide to scrap them? Well, instead of scrapping them, all I did was I took the water hose, and I lined it up through things that are particularly have a little bit of fuss about them if they dry out. Now, everything likes to have some type of moisture, right? But I go through and I, I line this water hose all through the landscape. And you can look in some of my previous videos um, of this season of 2023. And you'll know which ones they are because they only got like a thousand views. So <laughs> just look for the ones with no views. Those are the ones that uh, I implemented. But people, as I continued to make these videos, people started asking me what the water hoses were all lined out. So this is what how I use this drip system. So I've taken a drill and then is that in there right there can you see yeah. that drill bit yeah okay so all i did was i take the smallest drill bit that i have and i come in here and i just uh lift this up and then drill drill a hole right into a space that is sitting over a plant so this hosta right here has the moisture coming from there so how do i do that i just take the water hose from my home and i connect the two and turn it on so the other end is capped off. So you can use a couple things. Again, if you're on a tight budget and you can't get to, um, you don't want to go purchase a cap, you can fold it over and you can run some wire. You can do something, but at the very end, it needs to be plugged. And so the water runs through all this. And then in each particular space that I know that uh, I have some fussy plants or plants that um, I don't want to see disappear, I will drill a hole. And so all throughout this garden, I do have another drip system, um, the one that I purchased and, and um, that's linked up to uh, a water system underground. But this one is for the hotter months and where I don't wanna run the water for everything, I will come out here and I'll just pop this water hose on. <clears throat> it'll go through here and it'll give uh, the needed areas the uh, much needed moisture and a um, simple way. And I didn't even have to discard the water hoses. And 
and at the end of the day i don't have to come out here and spot water so um i really i really like that idea and it's really paid off because um when my wife and i go on vacation and we we need the kids to um kind of look at this stuff we just put flags in the garden the the little marker flags and the kids know where to come in and and um apply apply the water hose from the home to there or you can go and you can buy you a, a timer and um if you don't have very many you can set a timer and uh it'll work as well so yeah hopefully that answers a lot of those questions that were um, asked about this um, drip line so pretty exciting and super cheap because i already own the i already own the uh, water hoses and i already own a drill bit so uh yeah let's move on to the next thing okay so when we first moved in i talked told you that we didn't have any trees anything to uh, block us out from all of our um, neighbors um, and we have two-story homes here so uh, what are they called by level um, split level homes around us so a lot of people can look down down on us this is the all, our home is the only one that faces the south everybody else faces the east and west so we have about seven or eight homes that could uh, without fencing and trees could see everything we did throughout the day so um, we parked in a hot tub here we wanted some privacy so i went went ahead and did another budget friendly inexpensive inexpensive project um, i went down and asked some of the box stores if i could have some of their old um, brown pallets and um, i built this wall for a privacy wall and then i went through and i cut the um the pallets down to different lengths so nothing looks organized everything's kind of um, different set, um, heights and lengths just like i would do all the borders through here so everything's mimicking one another and um then I just came through here and I nailed them to a piece of plywood. I'll put up a uh, video. Those of you who have seen this um, project done a couple times, I apologize, but there are a ton of questions because we do have a lot of new viewers and I'm thanking you guys all for watching the, uh, the channel and helping it grow. But I wanna make sure everybody's informed and they kind of get a general idea. So above me, I have a um, honeysuckle that's coming over and it's given us a little bit added more privacy it softens this hardscape here so on the other side it's all just looks like a wall of green on this side we have our inspiration wall where we go to travel to different states and countries and we add them on here you wouldn't believe all the feedback on these um, we do have some more that we need to put put up but i love when people say hey i seen my my uh, my state or my country on here so puerto rico We've been there, we love it. California, all you guys, uh, we love your states. And so um, this is kind of a memory wall. Doesn't mean that that's what you have to do, but if you're looking for a privacy wall or some way to get, add some privacy, you can go on the cheap, get you some um, old wooden pallets. Uh, I didn't do the blue. You've got the blues and reds and blacks. I just did the brown. Um, they are sun faded now, um, but when you when you see I put uh, the video or the images up here, you're gonna see how sharp it looks. You can put a, a preserver or something over it. You just have to do your research, and it'll stay that color. This is sun baked because I wasn't particularly interested in keeping the colors together. Um, what I was interested in was just having privacy from neighbors. So um, that being said, super easy project. Probably cost maybe $150 at the time. I know lumber's prices are different now. So um, yeah, pretty cheap project that's been here for a long time. Again, treated lumber. You have to use that treated lumber. I'll, I can't stress enough. Otherwise, um, all your hard work and everything will crumble to the ground eventually because it will um, deteriorate. So yeah, fun project. last but not least we have this wonderful little shed here a shed with no color but a lot of story behind it so i went on to market um, place on facebook and i just happened to see on there free wood i think i put in free wood i punched in free wood and this popped up so um, a family was throwing this out they had alongside the road they said you haul off it's free so i went and picked it up it wasn't for sure what i was going to do with it but i went and picked it up anyway um, all this is is two by sixes and come to find out when I was speaking with the folks, 
Um, that was their old deck. They were putting in a new deck and all the lumber was still pretty good. They just wanted to do, use the newer material. So I hauled it home. One thing led to another and I built the shed. Um, all this is is two by sixes running in different lengths to give the appearance that it's an old um, shed that's been here for a lot of long time. It has a good story to it. And um, I think it turned out wonderful. All I did was went and uh, the things that I had to purchase was the two by fours to hold up the bones and the structure, the railroad ties and the plywood for the floor and the roof. So at the time, I know lumber's high now, but at the time I think I spent two to $300 for all of it. And we are now have a shed for the last uh, six or seven years. I'll see if I have some photos that I can pop up, but um, we originally started putting it over there because it was super hot months and I, I built it in uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I built it in five sections and then um, we tore it down each section, brought it over here within like 30 minutes and we assembled it here in the sun because all the trees weren't here. And that's what gave me the inspiration to plant these um, trees, parked them right here beside um, these birches right beside it. And so now I have a whimsical, wonderful layout right here. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for a way to add uh, some more whimsy to your garden, go to Facebook uh, Marketplace and see what uh, what's free if you're looking on the budget or if you're looking for something particular, punch it in. And um, I'm sure people are willing to, uh, you know, give and take on their price. So yeah, this turned out wonderful for us. Again, I implement the same things. You know how I use the different uh, hardscape, the different heights and stuff. I did it on the pallet wall. I did it over here. I do it on the border. I do it on my um, bridges. I just continue to recycle and repurpose the same idea. And then, so I use the plants in much the same way. Um, here's another honeysuckle. I've got it there. I've got it in several places. So you're continually seeing the same things throughout the garden. It just makes it feel more cohesive and more homey. So um, yeah, but as far as it goes with hardscape, one of my favorite projects. Okay, so here is the old rust bucket. Here's what somebody either tossed out or fell out. It used to sit right beside the shed um, in the front and I planted this up. And over the years, um, I decided that I was going to move it towards the back. And so some of the legs are falling off, some of the bottoms falling off, but I thought I could really um, turn this into a charming little little um, planter. So I'm gonna park it in this spot because one particular reason, I have a dead space right back here. I don't know if you can see that through here, but there is a dead space right here. And um, it's, um, I don't really have the mulch and stuff over it back here. So I'm gonna plant this up uh, in front of this hosta and we're gonna give it some color to this corner and it'll be tucked away so it won't be so in your face. Um, but yeah, all it is, is is just an old fire pit that's fallen apart and they probably got tired of seeing it in their yard and um, they threw it out. And so one man's trash, another man's treasure. So I'm gonna add all the soil that I need to it. I won't need to drain, uh, put drainage holes in it because there was already drainage holes in this particular um, fire pit. But uh, one thing I will do as the bottom continues to rust out is um, I'll just build the soil up or I'll add some stone or something down there that, um, that I can allow the water or allow the soil to um, rest on and I'll never have to really get rid of it as long as the bones are still um, structurally sound. And all this is, this is all solid. It's just the netting and, and a little bit of the bottom is rusted out. So. So I went down to a local box store and this, because I wanted to find an item, um, a few plants for this. And some of these leaves were um, starting to look a little rough because they had it in the wrong location. Um, here in my zone, this uh, zone 6A, these particular um, cladiums like to be in, you know, no more than three hours of sun, maybe five hours. Well, they were in about six hours of sun, but on concrete. So some of this stuff, um, Looks a little ratty, so they started putting some of this stuff on discount. And I thought this would be a great idea to add back here and highlight this um, this particular place space in the garden. So in all, I have three of these caladiums that 
I will pop in here. There are several different colors of caladiums, but I really like this one. Yeah, see this one that was torched uh, fell off. But uh, I really like this particular caladium um, in the color because it will really brighten up the dark space um, in this corner. And if you're looking for um, throughout the garden, um, this might actually catch your fancy, um, but it could probably also easily be missed um as it is tucked back so that's one of the things when i'm building this garden i really uh strive for is to give the idea that you walk away from here going i need to visit that garden again because i missed so much because okay i was able to save money on the caladiums um because that was a misunderstanding on their behalf thinking that uh they can handle that kind of sun but because it was on the sidewalk in the road uh, the pavement it uh, cooked a little bit faster so these though I was not able to save any money I had to pay the regular price and so uh, you win some and you lose some but I think this is going to be another great addition and then I do have the sun patients that uh, again I had to pay full price but um, I think again um, it just adds a little bit more color to this pot and we'll just see how it works out now I am a little worried as I stand here I see that these might actually look a lot like the hostas um, in appearance. So we'll just see, we'll see how it turns out. I maybe should have got two begonias. I don't know, let's check it out. So one of the things I'm trying to create in this garden is a bit of mystery when you tour or when I'm showing you, but for others who um, actually come and tour the garden. But I'm really trying to find that happy balance be between um, being a normal garden and then a garden of mystery. Um, and what I mean by that is I want, I want the idea that you have to come to this garden multiple times to actually get the feel of what's actually happening in this garden. There are so many pockets that I've created that uh, in the end, uh, when you walk away, I want you to be blown away or when you turn off this channel, I want you to kind of be blown away I want you still to have questions. I want you to want to come back, both you on the uh, on YouTube, but also those who are um, visiting the garden. And um, by doing that, it helps. It allows me to be more creative, um, continue to push the envelope on um, gardening, and particularly in my garden, and um, and really just inspire folks to uh, find their inner child and see what you can do to a garden and uh with just a little bit of imagination a whole bunch of hard work and a little bit of a budget so um when i'm putting in and when i'm parking different things into the garden and trying to see what works i think there's an idea that we would have probably more than likely walked away or drove past this and then if I can create that, that idea that you don't have to necessarily throw everything out, you don't necessarily have to um, uh, look at everything as wasted old junk, that um, you can actually repurpose so much and create, create a ton of interest in the garden or in your home, um, in different par parts of um, what you own what's sentimental to you and um, create create some whimsy and create a new purpose and and not this um, idea that uh, because it's tattered a little bit or it's um, you know maybe lo lost its uh, lust you've lost your lust for that particular item in its particular location and uh, by doing so um, you can actually inspire your own self, I think, to uh, to re to look at things differently in a different light. There's nothing better than um, walking away from something that uh, the family looked at and been like, "Dad, why are you saving that?" I've got an idea. Of course you do, Dad. Of course you do. And um, then they, 
you ever hear of that? Oh, I would have never thought of that. That that's me. I, I like I like to be that guy that uh, has that said um, to myself over and over. And um, yeah, so these caladiums. I don't. I'm not gonna have a whole bunch of sun back here. This um, you can see. <laughs> I'm on my knees, and you can see just how um, much growth is around me. But this this right here is a burning bush behind me, and then this is a limelight hydrangea. And then you can see just a little bit of dappled willow, or dappled sunlight um, speckled through all of this. And so it'll get a little bit more evening sun, but I'm, I don't even know that it's an actual full hour and a half. It might be just an hour. So it might just be enough light um, to help these uh, caladiums and begonias kind of, or begonia take off and the sun impatient. Um, this sun impatient can go either way. It doesn't have to be in sun, but, uh, yeah, I think all in all that turned out really well. And as time goes on, I think we can um, look back and see if that was a success. And I kind of figure I'm that uh, I'm betting on myself that it might be. Yeah, like I said, the hosta might actually be um, too close to the same um, color as the impatient, but I think it, I think it'll play out well. I'll put some water on it. We'll watch it. And um, who knows, maybe the next time I'm at a box store, I might see something that uh, will trigger a different idea and I can pull that out, park that uh, sun impatient somewhere else in the garden. And, and at the end of the day, I think uh, that little um, piece of metal that would have otherwise been thrown out or was thrown out, now makes a, for a little, little story, a little pocket right there in the garden. Okay, so this planter isn't like, super wow factor yet um, as the caladiums and stuff start to spill out the top because I've, I've used caladiums in the past um, and they'll get to that spot they'll get to the point where they're spilling out and everything's kind of hanging over uh, just need a little bit of uh, due time but uh, once it starts to do that it's going to be an excellent little addition to this corner I already feel like it um, really brightens that corner here's the thing though uh, when I'm talking about hidden gems in the garden tucking stuff in you can come around this corner and I've got a couple um, bird houses from Dennis who uh, my wife's uncle who made those um, we had a uh, nest of rabbits in this corner underneath the shed and so they ate all of the all the things that were in there the hookra and the forest grass and that type of stuff so waiting on that to come you know come back and uh, get into its full form and I still need to add a few things in there and that's why I haven't mulched that spot I'll probably pop in some begonias or something nice in there but if you're walking in this direction you can definitely see it and you know you kind of stop and you look around and and see the different things that are in the different spots here <clears throat> and see i've got a lot of hardscape in here that are uh kind of tucked in and as the season goes along um with all the foliage and stuff that's in there it's kind of hidden so it doesn't stand out like it would you know in uh, a dormant state so if I come from the other direction I'll show you how you could easily miss it and goes back to me saying that uh, creating a garden where you have to tour it many times to see all the different um, uh, layers in your garden um, so let me come from the other direction so this might be a good start uh, to our walk and head that way the um, location is on the other side of that shed but I thought this would be a good spot. So you're coming through here and you're kind of looking at the garden and you're looking at all the different uh, things that are going on. And it's easy to miss because if you're first time to the garden or first time watching this, there's just so much to see. But uh, yeah, it's turned out so well. We'll kind of slowly bring you around here. But you can see how you could get lost in that little nook right there. You might not even see it, but uh, if you're coming from the other direction, you can. So maybe a um, element that you might add to your garden. But I think it turned out so nice. And uh, like I said, with due time, all those uh, annuals will spill over and will add a little bit more charm to an area that's uh, much needed. So um, anyway, another fun project, another video down. Thank you guys for watching. If you, hit, if you are enjoying the videos, hit the like, hit the subscribe. Uh, make sure and hit a notification. We'll see you guys the next time. Take care. Bye-bye.